Why are so many baby boomers facing financial troubles? The baby boomer generation is living 20% longer than the generation of the 1960s. This increased longevity means that there is a greater financial need during retirement. In this video we will discuss 9 reasons why many in the baby boomer generation might face financial difficulties. These include rising healthcare costs, insufficient savings, and more. I will also provide suggestions on how to plan for a more fulfilling golden age. Current social security is somewhat insufficient compared to before. You see, in the year 2024, the number of workers supporting each retiree is at an all-time low. This demographic shift is putting a strain on the funding for social security. As the workforce shrinks, the ratio of workers to retirees has significantly decreased, reducing the flow of Social Security tax revenues used to fund retirement benefits. Actuaries are aware of this, and both the SSA and the government have implemented small changes that have a significant impact over time. Today, most people claim Social Security at age 62. Now, that is the first year they are eligible. This means that, generally speaking, people are not working longer especially in agriculture. The full retirement age has gradually increased from 65 to 67, leading to reduced monthly benefits for early retirees. This change means that retirees must work longer or accept lower monthly payments, affecting their financial stability. More and more retirees are required to pay taxes on their Social Security benefits, further reducing their net income. The income thresholds for taxing Social Security benefits have not been adjusted since 1983 for 50% taxation and 1995 for 85% taxation, despite inflation and wage growth. Additionally, if someone wants to withdraw Social Security at age 62 and say, invest it, the maximum amount they can earn without having to pay back a portion will be $22,320 in the year 2024. For every dollar earned over that amount, they have to pay back 50 cents. Once they reach full retirement age, they can earn as much as they want. Waiting until age 70 to claim Social Security can increase your monthly benefits by up to 32%. Couples can maximize their benefits by coordinating their claiming strategies, such as one person claiming spousal benefits while the other delays their own benefits. If possible, Continuing to work after retirement age can increase your Social Security benefits since they are based on your highest 35 years of earnings. Additionally, reducing living expenses by downsizing your home or adopting a more frugal lifestyle can help stretch your retirement income even further. Do you know the average debt amount for retirees? Comment below and chat with me. Debt in retirement is more common than ever. As of 2024, 65% of retirees aged 65 to 74 are carrying debt. This includes an average of $113,000 in mortgage debt and $45,000 in other debts such as credit cards, auto loans, and student loans. And the situation slightly improves for those aged 75 and older, with the percentage dropping to 50% of retirees at that age. For reference, only 20% of individuals over 75 had debt in 1989. Therefore, we've seen an increase from 20% in 1989 to 50% in 2024. This trend is a consequence of tougher economic times, easier credit standards, and the general belief that debt has become a part of life. Many retirees are still paying off their mortgages, often due to refinancing or taking out home equity loans to maintain their lifestyle or support family members. High mortgage payments can significantly reduce the amount of disposable income available for daily living expenses and health care. Consider refinancing your mortgage to a lower interest rate or extending the term to reduce your monthly payments. Selling your home and moving to a smaller, more affordable one can free up equity and lower housing costs. Some credit cards offer 0% interest balance transfers for a limited time, which can provide relief if used wisely. If your car payment is too high, Consider selling or trading your vehicle for a cheaper one. Next, regarding your savings. Before we continue, I have a 10-second request for all of you. If you can help us out, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to us. In return, we promise to keep making this show even better for you. Deal? As of 2024, 
the average retirement savings for baby boomers is around $200,000. Although this might seem like a substantial amount, it is often insufficient to cover the expenses of a long retirement, especially with rising healthcare costs and increasing life expectancy. The average Social Security benefit in 2024 is $18,600 per year. According to the 4% rule, $200,000 in retirement savings allows for an annual withdrawal of $8,000. When combined, the average retiree's income is $26,600 annually. However, the average retiree spends about $50,000 each year on housing, healthcare, food, and other essentials. For a retired household, the total income, including any pension income, averages $60,500 per year. While this might be sufficient for some, the situation changes drastically when considering debt. The average debt service payment for $158,000 per person at a 4% interest rate is about $6,550 annually per person. This means that if a couple has an income of $26,000, Subtracting the debt payment of $8,000 leaves them with an effective income of just $18,000. Many retirees still carry significant debt into retirement, with an average mortgage debt of $113,000 and an additional $45,000 in other debts. Debt repayments can substantially reduce disposable income, making it challenging to cover daily expenses. To manage this, consider using the snowball method to save on interest over time. Focus on paying off high-interest debts first, such as credit cards and personal loans. Compare different lenders to find the best interest rates and refinancing terms. Consolidating high-interest debts into a single loan with a lower interest rate can simplify payments and reduce interest costs. By effectively managing debt, maximizing Social Security benefits, and supplementing income, you can work towards a safer and more comfortable retirement. Share your experiences with retirement savings in the comments below to enlighten me and everyone else. Next, let's talk about healthcare costs. A typical retired couple is expected to spend about $41,000 on healthcare during retirement. However, according to the latest data from Fidelity, the actual cost for a retired couple is nearly $318,000. This staggering difference is causing significant financial stress for many retirees. One major issue is that many retirees overlook health care costs before they qualify for Medicare at age 65, and even then, Medicare doesn't cover everything. Dental care, vision, and hearing are often not included, which adds to the total health care cost. Plus, rising prescription drug costs can further strain a retiree's budget. To help manage these expenses, Medigap policies are available. These policies cover costs that Medicare does not such as co-payments, co-insurance, and deductibles. By reducing out-of-pocket expenses, Medigap policies can provide peace of mind and financial security. Medicaid can also help by covering long-term care costs, but it's important to note that eligibility is based on income and asset limits. Speaking of long-term care, this is a cost that almost no one considers, yet many will need it. The average annual cost of long-term care is about $108,000 per person. This can vary significantly depending on the level of care required. So, what can you do to prepare for these costs? Start by planning early and considering all potential expenses, including health care and long-term care. Look into Medigap policies and understand Medicaid eligibility. By taking these steps, you can better secure your financial future and reduce stress in your retirement years. Longevity risk is something we all need to consider, especially as we approach retirement. As of 2020, if you are approaching retirement or already retired, you are more likely to live 20% longer than someone who was getting ready to retire in 1960. But here's the bad news you now have to figure out how to pay for those extra years. Back in 1960, people didn't have to worry about extreme longevity risk to the extent we do today. The biggest problem is that no one truly knows what it's like to be older while they're growing up. This lack of foresight leads to improper planning. Many think they'll always be youthful until the end. This concept is what Peter Atia refers to as the health span the period of life where one is generally healthy and active. We all imagine we'll be able to do everything we can do now, 
even if we're no longer required to like working. Unfortunately, that's not the reality in late-stage retirement. Did you know that average life expectancy has significantly increased over the past few decades? In the 1950s, the average life expectancy in the United States was around 68 years. Today, that number is over 78 years and continues to rise. This means that the baby boomer generation, born between 1946 and 1964, is likely to live much longer than their parents. While this is great news, it also means more years of retirement and therefore greater financial needs. As we age, our healthcare needs often increase. Longer life expectancy means more medical expenses, which can be substantial, especially if long-term care is needed. Over time, the cost of living rises. What seems like a comfortable savings today may not be enough in 20 or 30 years due to inflation eroding purchasing power. One of the biggest fears retirees have is outliving their savings. For many baby boomers without sufficient retirement savings, this is a real and urgent concern. Another important aspect to consider is that we often underestimate the impact of aging on our abilities. Many retirees believe they will remain as active and healthy in their 80s as they were in their 60s. However, the reality is that physical and cognitive abilities can decline, affecting everything from driving and managing finances to daily activities. Longevity is a blessing, but it also requires careful financial planning to ensure you can enjoy your golden years without financial stress. Remember, it's never too late to start planning and making adjustments. Next, let's talk about why baby boomers are sometimes called the sandwich generation. This generation often finds itself financially supporting both their aging parents and their adult children. As their parents live longer, they often require more care. This can mean helping with daily activities, managing medical appointments, or even providing financial support for health care and living expenses. The same medical advancements that have increased your lifespan have also extended the lives of many of your parents. While we hope that they enjoy long, healthy lives, the reality is that many do not, leading to significant costs. On the other hand, many adult children are struggling to achieve financial independence. Whether due to student loans, high housing costs, or challenges in the job market, baby boomers often find themselves financially or housingly supporting their adult children. On the other hand, the requirements for our children's success have increased dramatically. When I was 19 years old, I moved out and never returned home. I worked during the day and attended night school to pay for my college education. I then put myself through graduate school at the Kellogg School of Management and moved to New York with my wife and one-year-old child to start a career in banking. Today, more safety nets exist and children are taking longer to become financially independent. While this isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does impose a financial burden on adults and retirees that may not have existed 30 years ago. So, on one end, your parents are living longer, and on the other, your children are financially dependent for a longer period. This dual responsibility can strain your finances, creating a challenging situation for many baby boomers. Next, let's dive into the pension shortfall faced by many companies today. Before the introduction of the 401k, companies offered what was known as a defined benefit plan. This type of plan guaranteed the benefits you would receive from the start of your employment. You could count on a predictable amount in retirement if you stayed with the company for 30 or 40 years. This system promoted lifetime employment, dedication, and the passing of skills from experienced employees to newcomers. However, the model has drastically changed. Today, employees are often categorized based on their contribution to the company's revenue. For instance, if you are a salesperson generating significant revenue, you are highly valued. On the other hand, if you work in roles considered cost centers, such as those outside sales and marketing, your position is at greater risk. These roles are often outsourced, although exceptions exist for highly skilled non-revenue generating positions. The reality is stark if you are not a strong revenue generator, you face the risk of losing your job quickly. The distinction between revenue generators and non-revenue generators has become deeply ingrained in many company structures. Moreover, union agreements have severely impacted the availability of defined benefit plans. 
Today, most people rely primarily on their 401k for retirement income. While there are exceptions, such as government jobs that still offer defined benefit plans, most corporations no longer provide this option. This shift has left many baby boomers in a precarious financial position as they approach retirement. Next, let's talk about market volatility. Many baby boomers retiring today have witnessed an incredible market run over the past 40 years. However, it hasn't always been smooth sailing. Take the period between 1973 and 1982, for instance. This was a time of stagflation, where prices kept rising, but the stock market remained stagnant. Let me break it down for you. In 1972, the S&P 500 closed the year at 111.8. Fast forward to 1981, and the S&P 500 closed the year at 122. Over this 10-year period, the market was essentially flat. For a bit of context, consider this in 1972. The average cost of a McDonald's hamburger was 21 cents. By 1981, that same hamburger cost 45 cents. This comparison highlights how prices increased significantly even though the market did not. If you find this video helpful, please share it with retirees and family members. Leave a comment below with any questions or topics you want us to cover next. Don't hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Your support is very important to us. Be sure to check out the next video appearing on your screen. You're sure to love the content we bring. Please leave a comment about which country you'd like us to explore next. Thank you for watching and see you in the latest video. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Thanks for being with us on this great journey. Leave your thoughts in the comments and like to help us. Remember to subscribe for more. See you soon.